Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to make Breakout in GDevelop, which is a free open source drag and drop programming language. It's on Mac, Windows and Linux and it can make games or any application really for those platforms or you can make it for iOS and Android. So it's a very versatile programming language. It's free on all those uh, platforms. I'm basic, you can download it here. So I've just Googled GDevelop. I'm basing it on a tutorial that they've already made, but they haven't really updated it for a long time. And I'm making some changes to it uh, to improve it as well. But you can go to the tutorials, go to breakout, go to the breakout tutorial, and you can follow theirs if you want. But uh, here are all the assets that I'm going to be using, so the graphics and so forth. So that'll make life a little bit easier for you. Breakout's a really good first game to make because it has no logic in it, like it's just mechanical. Uh, so that makes it easy to program. So I'm gonna click on this little thing here. This is gdevelop I'm in. Go to file, create, new empty project. You'd probably want to up your resolution, like 720p is a bit rubbish, but I'm gonna leave it at that because it makes it a little bit easier for me to, to see everything on the screen. Uh, but you can choose it or if you make it a resolution appropriate for a mobile phone, if that's what you're gonna design your game for. I'm changing this to breakout, the name, and then I'm going to point it to where that I want it to save. So it's already pointing at my folder, breakout assets, so that's fine. I'll open that. So I've pointed it to where I want to save it, and then I'm going to create a project. I'm just going to have a bit of a think. I've got an untitled scene. A scene is how you break up your game. In this particular case, I'm going to do everything in the one scene. But when you finish your game, you might want to have a scene that's your title scene. So the, the title graphics and the instructions, you might have a scene for the game over. But I'm doing the, the actual game itself, everything in the one scene. I have events here. This is where you do your code. So I'll go to, I don't want to have untitled scene. That's a bit messy. So I'll click on this little button here, project manager and click on this and I'm going to rename the scene and I'm going to call it breakout and oops got me out of it but I'll just quickly double click on it there it is cool so I've got my scene objects here so you can have Global and scene scene means it's just in that one scene global means it's within the whole game I'm just going to do everything within the scene for this particular case. I'm going to add a new object. Oops, add a new object, wrong button. Uh, I'm going to do a sprite. A sprite is an object that moves. This is going to be my paddle. I'm going to add an animation. Add a sprite. So find this animation for the, well, it's just one image, but they still call it an animation. Open. So there's my player paddle. I'm going to edit the points. This is this little dot here is the orientation point. So when it says it's at x0, y0, it means that dot is at x0, y0. This doesn't matter in this particular case, but I just um, want to have it in the middle. It doesn't. Sometimes it does matter, like if you want to have something come out of that particular paddle. Um, so if you want it to shoot, you don't want it to shoot in the from the top left-hand corner, you want to shoot it from the middle of the paddle. So just out of habit, I just drag that into the middle. I don't know why it defaults up there, but most of these programming languages do that. There might be some logic to it. Close. And then I want to edit the collision masks as well. Normally you wouldn't do this, um, but because I want the ball to bounce differently depending on where it hits the paddle, uh, the easiest way of doing that is to edit the collision mask. So this, at the moment, it's just a straight up square. I'm gonna add a couple of vertexes. So these dot points, uh, add a vertex. So now I've got um, six rather than four. And I know, or already know my numbers, so I'm gonna put them in. Um, so basically you can drag and drop those, drag those vertices around, but because I, want, I know where I want them to be, I'm gonna just put the numbers in so that it, it mirrors perfectly. You can copy my numbers if you want. This is just my opinion of how I wanted to do it. And I'm being fancy by having a, a couple of different um, lines rather than just having it like a uh, sort of simpler shape. You can add more if you want, make it even more complicated. That's not right. There we go. Oops, what's, what's missing? Oh, it's got to be seven. So I've 
using the power of mathematics, I made it mirror, um, just based on the 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 bottom being 20 and the side being 115. But that's all nice and mirrored. So what that means is when the ball hits here, it'll be hitting a flat object. If the ball hits here, it's hitting that angle. So it all it means I can hit the edges of the paddle to make it to control. The, where the ball is going to a certain degree, which is part of breakout. It wasn't in the original tutorial, but this is a nice easy way of doing that. So I've got my paddle, apply, and I'll drag it onto the screen. So at the moment this won't do anything because I've got no code. If I preview it, there's my uh, paddle. I'll just get rid of this authentication. Um, just sitting there, doesn't do anything. So let's add some code. So I'm gonna go to events. I'm going to add a new event. In this case, I want it to happen. So usually you put conditions in here. So only do it when this is happening condition. So this already has one. So this, this condition is at the beginning of the scene. Uh, I don't want it to display that banner. I'll leave it there for now. Um, yeah, in the beginning of the scene, do these things, which I will add some things later. In this case, I want it to do it all the time. So I'm going to add an action. The action's related to the paddle. I'm going to change the paddle's X position. And I'm going to set it to the mouse position. And unfortunately, normally when you type things in, it will help you. But this particular one, and you just have to kind of know it. So that's how it's trying to help me. But I just know that it's this. And it wants two brackets. So unfortunately, you kind of just have to know. I mean, obviously, you can Google it, to, to rem which I had to do to remember. Um, most of the X and Y, like if I was talking about an object, it would put a dot. So we, I... It, I have trouble remembering how to do this. So what this is doing is it's setting the paddle position to where the mouse is. Okay, and I'll preview it. And now my paddle moves with my mouse. Now I don't want to see the pointer. So uh, what I'll do is at the beginning, add an action, other action, so it's not relating to any, anything on those lists. I go to mouse and touch, and I'm going to hide the cursor. And now if I preview it, oops, it's still there. Why is it still there? Oh, maybe I have to put it in the main thing. I'll just drag it in there. Preview. Yeah, that worked. Cool, so now it doesn't show me the pointer. Uh, cool. So let's add, what would be the next thing we'll add? We'll add a ball. Actually, no, we'll add the bricks. So I'm going to add a new object. You could do these, basically sprites are things that move, tiled sprites are things that are stationary, so backgrounds and things like that. You could uh, do the bricks as a stationary object, because they are in, in the tutorial that I'm doing now, they won't be moving. But um, by having them as sprites, you can do things like have them being damaged so that they can hit multiple times to get rid of them. Uh, well, you can do that easily. You can do it with uh, tiled sprites as well uh, and you could have them move if you wanted as well maybe you have some tiles that are moving backwards and forwards so I'm going to make it a sprite sorry I'm over explaining that I'm going to call it brick I'm going to add an animation I'm going to add a sprite uh, where are we this one has multiple colors so I'll make it uh, red I'll add a couple more add an animation so I can choose different this means I can choose different colors for the the um, brick if I want to. I'm not going to in this tutorial, but I just might as well show you that this is a thing that you can do. You can have more. So you could have a animation for running or an animation for um, squatting in a different game. That sort of is why you would have this. And I don't really care about the masks or the points or anything like this. I'm just going to apply that. And now I've got my brick. Now I could just drag that in. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something fancy. I'm going to add, so click on this, click on external layouts. I'm going to add an external layout. Sorry, I didn't click on that. Add external layout. This is a way of bringing things into the, the scene. So I'm going to add an external layout. I'm going to call it uh, zero. And then I'll double click on it so I can edit it. So it's asking what scene I want this associated with. So I want to associate, I've only got the one scene, so I'm going to associate it with that. And then this, this is 
elements that can be put, dragged into the screen, like brought into the game. So I'm going to add a brick. Now, because I want to have things placed nicely, what I'll probably want to do is I'll go to the grid and set it up and I'll make it eight by eight. So this is just means that everything will move in chunks rather than pixel by pixel, uh, which will make it a lot easier to place things and have them line up properly. I, I'm usually pretty lazy and don't do this and it makes things look a bit dodge. And I'll just show the grid. And so now when I, I'll just zoom in. So I'll just put in a few bricks. If I hold down control, uh, when I drag, it'll make a copy of it. So I can select both and hold down control. So you can see you can quickly make a grid. Obviously you put more than four on, but I'm gonna be lazy and obviously, for, well not obviously, but for testing, it'll make it easier for me to test if there's only a few bricks I need to knock out to win the game. Uh, cool, so I'll go back to the, so that's not in there and if I preview it, it doesn't have those bricks in there. It's in an external layer. So what we want to do is load that in. So in breakout, at the beginning of this, the scene, I'm going to add an action, other actions, external layout. It'll be in there somewhere. External layouts, create from external layout. Uh, I can just choose the one, choosing zero. Okay, I know that all that sounds more complicated than just dragging in, but what it will mean is later on when I make a, another layer, I can easily code so that it can, when you f finish a level, it'll load a new level for you. So that's why we've done that seemingly complicated thing uh, so that we can do that. So if I preview it now, let's close that annoying thing. Uh, it's got the bricks in there. Uh, so let's make another one while we're here. I will just to be lazy, I'm going to duplicate this one. Duplicate, so I just made a copy of it. I'm going to call it two. Whoops, didn't want to do that. Rename it. I'm call it, uh, actually, I'll call it uh, one. That'll work. Yeah. Um, cool. And then I'll edit it so that I, when we're playing, I can we can tell the difference between one and the other. So I'm just going to hold down Control, drag it down. So I've got two bricks. I should put the grid on so that show grid. Oops. Annoyingly, it doesn't remember the grid from one thing to another. Let's just zoom in. Just check. I know I'm being OCD here. I think I've got it bang on anyway. That looks pretty good. Yeah, we'll leave that. That's good. Cool. Uh, so we'll go back to breakout. So we've got the, our bricks. Uh, we need a ball. So let's make a ball. Add a new object. Sprite. Ball. Add an animation. Add a sprite. There's our ball. I'm opening it. Um, edit points. I don't think this matters, but as I say, I just can't help myself. <laughs> I can't not do it. Okay, and then apply. I've got a ball. And I can just drag that on the screen. And I'll put it, I'll try and put it in an exact position so that I can remember. So I'll put it 300 by, 600 by 300. So I'll just remember that so that when I put it back, I know to put it in that same spot. Uh, cool. So the ball's just going to sit there and do nothing. Uh, we also need some barriers uh, so that the, if the ball hits the edges of the screen, it bounces off. There are other ways of doing this, but this is how they did it in the tutorial, and it's not a bad way of doing it. So this time we're going to use a tiled sprite. So this is the uh, barrier that the ball is going to bounce off. Uh, so as I said, a tiled sprite is a choose from no, choose file choose file uh, is something that doesn't move. Yep, there we good. Apply. And I'll just drag that in. And I'll turn my grid on. And I'll make it 8x8. Eight eight. And then I'm making basically making a 
a, a wall that you can't see. So it's off screen. So this is something for the ball to bounce off, essentially. So that if it goes off the top, well, it won't go off the top, and it won't go uh, off the sides, but if it, it will go off the bottom. And you won't be able to see this. Again, there'll be other ways of doing this. This is just one way of doing it. Cool. Um, all right, so we want to have some properties. So if I go to this ball, um, you can give it behaviors. Behaviors is a way of coding some quite complicated things that have already been done for you. So I want this ball to be able to bounce. So I'm going to go to behaviors. I'm going to add a behavior. Uh, it's not one of the, the standard ones here. I'm just going to type in bounce. So there's lots of other ones that aren't necessarily there. Bounce is one of them. Uh, and then I'm going to um, apply that behavior to it. So just double check, check that happened. Behaviors, yep, it's got bounce in there. Um, so I don't have to figure out how to, the mathematics of angles and all that sort of stuff um, for making that ball behave how I want it to behave. I can uh, just do it using a behavior. Um, all right, so we've got a ball. Uh, we want it to bounce off things. So we need to add, um, what we can do is we'll add groups. So open, that's layers, where's groups? This this one here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, add a new group and I'm going to call it bounce. So these are the things that I want that ball to bounce off. I'll just double click on that. And then I can add the things I want to bounce off. I want it to bounce off the paddle. I want it to bounce off the brick and I want it to bounce off the barrier. So I don't have to do the code three times for telling it to bounce off things. It will just, um, do the same thing for all of those those things. So uh, I've got it bouncing. I do have to put that in the code. So in the breakout events, I'm gonna add a new event, new condition, the ball has collided with something. It's gonna collide with the bounce objects or any one of those three objects. If it collides with them, I'm gonna make it do something. Okay, in this case, I want the ball to bounce off the bounce objects. Okay, um, the ball's not moving, so I need to make get the ball moving. So again, under a breakout, add a new event. I'm gonna add a condition. I'm gonna check that the ball's not moving. Uh, object is stopped. So that's one condition. And then I'm gonna add another condition, looking at the mouse, checking that someone's uh, clicked the button, basically clicked and released. Uh, is it this one? It's confusing me with the text. All right, so it's the left mouse button is clicked. Okay, so the ball isn't moving and the left mouse button is clicked. The reason I checked whether the ball's moving is otherwise you could keep clicking the ball and it would um, keep changing what it's doing. So I'm gonna add an action to the ball. I'm going to give it a force. The force is how you make things move. And I'm gonna do it with, uh, with an angle. So the angle is going to be um, 70 degrees plus a, a random element. So plus 40, so that means it'll go um, 70. So 70 plus 20 is 90, so it can go up to 90 and then plus, anyway. It's a range, you get what I'm saying. Um, and I'll make it 400, I think 400 is a good speed. Instant means it does it once and stops, which is not what we want. Permanent means it keeps doing it. Okay, uh, so I've got quite a lot of elements happening here. Now, so I've done hardly any code really, but um, we've got a lot of the game actually happening. So let's see what we've done so far. Let's preview it, I'll just get rid of that stupid thing. And I'll, it's waiting for me to click on the mouse button. There it goes the ball. And it's bouncing up things. It should bounce off the, check that it's bouncing. See, see that if I hit the edge, it bounced differently. So I can affect what the ball's doing. It will be smoother than this on your computer. It's um, being a bit jittery because um, I'm uh, recording it. Anyway, so get close that. So we want the ball to be able to damage or get rid of bricks. So the, Ball is collided with the 
um, what do you call it? I'll move this up because this is something that happens at the beginning of the game. Um, the ball is colliding with bounce. I'm going to add a new event. I'm going to add a new condition. I'm going to say the ball has collided with the brick because I wanted to do a specific thing with the brick. And then I'm making this a subcondition of this one. So it only checks this if it's already checked that. So this is something that you want to do in your coding. You want to have only check items when you need to. I, it will affect how fast the program runs. In this case, it doesn't really matter. You can make it, this one really inefficient because it's such a simple game. Um, but where you can do things like this, where you have only make this condition happen when something else has happened, so that it's only happening, it's happening less often, uh, you want to try and do that to make your code more efficient. I should, should add some sound effects as well. So I'm going to add an action to the ball bouncing. I'm going to add another action. Uh, sounds and music, play a sound, and there are sounds in the thing. Choose a file, there are og files, uh, this one. Og's just another, um, it's a free alternative to mp3. MP people own mp3, so if you have mp3, you have to um, pay money to it, so it's OGS you don't. And then I'll add it, um, so with this one, it's hitting the brick, I'm gonna add an action. I'm going to kill the brick, so delete it is what they, the term they use in this. So delete the brick, and then add an action. I'm gonna make it also play a different sound, or in this case, it's gonna play both sounds, but it works fine. Uh, play a sound, choose a file, play the other one. The mining one is what they call it. And then OK. Uh, cool. So now it can destroy the bricks. Get rid of that. Go away. Bang. And it makes a noise. So it makes a noise every time it hits the walls and whatnot. And it's actually making both of those noise when it gets the brick. OK. So now we need to add, uh, we can add a score. Let's add a score. So we'll just uh, make a new object. This is going to be a text object. There we go. Call it score. Oh, core. That's not quite right. <laughs> Give it another go. Uh, let's make it uh, 40. And we'll make it, uh, make it orange. And I'll start it off as being zero. Cool. And then in my code, I can add a condition. So it's hit a brick. I'm going to add an action, uh, other action, variables. We've got global and scene variables. So global variables are seen throughout the whole program. Scene variables are only seen within the, this one scene. So it's kind of between local and um, global variables in a, another programming language. I'm going to just do global. I don't need it to be. I want it to be a number because I'm going to do maths with it. I'm going to call it score and I'm going to add to it. Even though I don't have a variable score because I don't have one, it'll just make one for me. Uh, add, I'm going to add 10 points. Now that's going to happen. I'm not going to be able to see it. So I need to um, change that scoreboard. So I'm going to add an action. It's relating to the score thing on the screen. I'm going to change the text of it. I'm going to set it to, and then um, I want to do it to a variable. So it's a global variable string is what I want. So what that's saying is I'm doing something with a global variable. The string part is converting it from a number into text. So even though um, you can have I've already set this text to be one, which is, oh, I'm sorry, zero, which is a number. Uh, it doesn't, the programming language doesn't see it as a number, it sees it as text. So you can do things with a number, like add one number to another, but you can't add text to text. So uh, when we're going from one to the other, we need to convert it. So what this string part is doing is converting that number, the score, to uh, text, which will, which is what this text thing wants. Uh, and let's preview that.
I'll close that again. I know I should get rid of that, but whatever. Oh, it does, I haven't put it on the screen, sorry. Just like other objects, I need to actually put that on the screen for it to do anything. It's for you to outset. It's a bit small. That'll do. Preview it. Can't see because it's behind that. There we go. Hey, it's worked. I'm not in love with the position of it, so I will move it over a bit. Cool. Uh, so we have a score and we can get rid of bricks. Um, so we need to be able to lose and we need to be able to go up a level. What should we do first? Let's go up a level first. So we'll go to breakout. We're going to add a... Well, actually, we can do this within the collision. So I'm going to add a new event. The event is regarding the brick. And what I want to do is I'm going to look at how many numbers of these bricks there are. Uh, it's in there somewhere. Number of instances on the set, so saying how many of these bricks are on the scene. I want it to do something when there's no bricks on the screen. So when there's no bricks on the screen, now I don't want this to run all of the time. I only want it to when it's collided with a brick, so I can just put it as a sub thing here. Uh, so that this only checks when a brick has been destroyed. Um, so again, it, it will make it run faster, but it won't make any difference for this because it's so simple. I am going to add an action. I'm going to add another action. This is going to be a variable. I'm going to make it a global variable and it's going to be a number. Uh, the variable is going to call, be called level. I'm going to add one to the level. Uh, add one, sorry. I'm going to put in one. So I'm creating a variable called level. I'm going to add one. So the first time it's going to be equal to one because it, it defaults to zero. Um, but when it's been created, uh, then I'm going to uh, check whether, actually no, I can do this straight away. I'm going to load the next level. So add an action, other action. Actually, no, I'll probably stop the ball first. So what I'll do is I will uh, move the, I'll stop the ball. There is some order in how it does these things, um, even though it kind of does everything all at once. Uh, where is it? Stop the object. So I've stopped the ball and I'm moving it to that position. Uh, where's the position? And I think it was 600 by 300. It might be the other way around, but we'll see. That's where I had it. So it's going back to the, I'm stopping it and putting it back to where it was. And then I am going to, uh, load the next scene. External layouts, create from external layout, choose a layout. So I'm going to use an expression and then I'm using that level. So global, see so yeah, it's helping me. So the global variable string is what I want and level is what I'm loading. So that's why I named the level something boring, zero, one and so on. So it means I can use a, a number going up to choose which level it makes it easy to code this otherwise I'd have to you know in some complicated way figure out which level I'm up to and which level to load this is an easy way of doing that uh, I might also I'm gonna this is uh, you can also do things uh, like which I haven't done you can add groups this is you won't really need it for this but it's a way of um, organizing your code. So if I drag this up here, I can put all the ball stuff in there. It doesn't do anything. It just is an, a nice way of, so I can close it and open it. So if your code gets um, big and clumsy, this is a way of organizing things into groups. Um, cool. Not, not super useful for this particular project, but good to know. Uh, what was I doing? I've loaded the thing. I've confused myself of where I was up to. So I've done the ball. Let's preview. Oh, that's right. I wanted that as a cheat. So I'm going to add a new event. I'm going to make this a keyboard event. Actually, I'll do it with a mouse. Uh, mouse is text and I'll make it the right mouse button. So I'm going to have to delete, delete this later. 
So all this is, I'm basically adding a cheat so that I can control the ball. And give it a force towards an object, towards the brick, and make it like 30. And permanent. So basically what this does is I can click on the right, right mouse button and it will go towards um, the bricks just so that when I'm testing it and I want to go from one level I'm not going to get stuck. So you probably want to add a, a group so that you, um, to remind yourself to delete this later. But anyway, that's what that's for. It's not part of the game, it's just for testing really. So preview it. I'll just check that we can go to the next level. Try and do it with my own skills. Okay, whoops. Oh, oh that, the cheat didn't seem to work. Oh well. Am I gonna get it? Hey, there we go. So it went to the next level, I didn't need the cheat. Uh, and then just based on how the code's working, it's it, all I needed to do was stop it and then um, put it back where it was. And I've already got the code for waiting for me to click on the mouse button to. Um, start the game, start the ball again. Cool. So we've got almost all the elements. We've got, a, we've got a score, we've got different levels. All we need to do now is add lives. So oh, it's quite a long video, half an hour. I think it was going to be quicker than this. Uh, so I'm going to add a sprite to do that. I'm going to call it lives. Add an animation. And there are ones already in there, so we'll go to life counter zero. I'm going to add an animation, add sprite, uh, life counter one, open. So this is just to represent the lives, it's not actually doing anything, it's just so that we, a graphical thing so that we can see how many lives we've got. Open. Animation, uh, sprite, and where's three? There's three. Open. Don't worry about the edit points or whatever, and I'll just drag that onto the screen. I've got my lives. And then I need a variable to keep keep track of how many lives I've got. So I'll go to events. At the beginning, I'll add an action. I'm going to do another action, variables. Global variable, it could be a a, a um, same one if I really wanted to. Uh, change number variable. Set to, so call it lives. Set to three. And then I just need to change that graphic to be that. So I'm going to add an action related to these lives. I'm going to animation by number set to animation index a global variable uh, level because this is already is a number don't have to use the string because it's expecting a number no not level sorry lives so because it's yeah because it's it want it is a number and it wants a number I don't have to use the string uh, preview that just check that that worked. Yep, got the lives working. So now I just need to be able to lose a life. So I'm going to add a new condition, new event regarding the ball, the y axis, I think it is. Is it x or y? Oh, I always forget this. I have a look at my thing. Yep, it's y. So I've got cheat notes. Actually, they haven't used the cheat notes. I'm surprised. Uh, y position is greater than the resolution of this screen is 720. I'm just going to go a little bit past that, but it, it'll be different depending on what resolution that you chose. Uh, okay, so it's got off the screen. Actually, what I'll do is I'll just delete the ball. Ball, delete it. And then I'll have a new event with the ball. Checking the number of them. Where is it? Number of instances on the scene. Uh, saying there's no balls left. 
So this uh, it makes it easier for later on for you to um, have a, a a pickup where you add an extra ball to the game. So you, you don't really need to do that part that I've just done there. But um, down the track, you know, having multiple balls would be a fun thing to have in the game. Uh, so it's checking that the ball went off the screen. It's deleting the ball now. It's checking whether there are, there are any balls. Um, there are zero balls on the screen. Yeah, that's right. So if it only does this if there's none. Uh, it's going to add a, a action. I don't want to stop the ball. I want to create a, a ball. So I, got, I need to make a new ball. So just delete it, create object, ball, and what was it, what did I say? 600 by 300. So I've taken the ball away. Ah, oh, no, that's why I've got to, I've check, got to check how many lives there are first. So I'll leave that in there for now. I'll add an action. I'll make live. Sorry, not that one. I need the variable. So I'm going a bit over the place, all over the place now. Variables, global variable, change and that. So I'm going to change, take a life or life away. Subtract one. So I've taken a life away. Uh, and now I'm going to check that I've still got lives. Add a new event, new condition, other condition, variables, global variable, number variable, lives is equal to, equal to or greater than zero. So I've still got some lives left. And I'll just drag that here. So this is just checking that I've still got lives happening. Uh, so when if I do have lives happening, then then I'll create another ball. If I don't, then it, it will leave me without a ball. Change, subtract one, and I also need to copy that uh, this bit of code here where I'm changing the graphic. So I'll just uh, copy it and paste it. And that's pretty much everything. Let's just check so i've got my we've already checked the thing we'll just check the lives now so the first sound doesn't work but it works after that so we've got that we've got points i can lose a life and it'll put it back to there so it's dropped a life off and then st started up again for me i can go to a new level and I should be able to lose all my lives and it will stop. So the last one, and it didn't give me the ball. So that's your whole game. There you go. 40 minutes, we'll be under. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy uh, Get into GDevelop. It's a really great programming language. This is a really good starter game to make. Uh, have fun with it. It's wonderful.